Hey everyone, this is Brian Moore from PM Square coming at you with another planning analytics tutorial. Let's dive into it. Uh, today we're going to be talking about code snippets within planning analytics. So just recently upgraded for the local folks in PAW version 81 yesterday, that's November 1st, uh, we got code snippets. I believe this was released to the cloud users a couple weeks ago, and uh, it's going to be an exciting feature to come in and check out. So the concept of code snippets uh, has been used by developers since the beginning of TM1. And basically the idea of grabbing five lines, 10 lines, 30 lines of code into your library or notepad or whatever you want to save it, and just patching that into your TI processes as you build them. So we don't have to write from scratch every TI process we go to create. Uh, we can oftentimes work off of snippets that we already have saved. So now we have a nice little wizard for you this little button right in here, as we can see, I am in a TI process called BM Demo. And we have a new little icon over on the right hand side. So if I hover over that and go ahead and click into it, I see three different categories. I have uh, create iterators and other I'll go ahead and run through each. The first one is uh, the most lengthy and we'll save that for last, but that is creating the uh, source view or zero out view uh, for use in the prologue. And it's very common in all load processes that we write. Uh, next one, create dimension. I'm gonna click on that. It brings up the preview window and we have parameters in all of our code snippets that we can substitute values in to the code. So wherever it says test dimension, it would substitute what I put in as a value. Not a whole lot of value in this create dimension one. It's only five lines, very simplistic uh, in terms of just naming a dimension and creating it. So on to the next. Create, delete consolidations MDX. So here's some MDX scripting, which we can use to delete uh, elements out of a dimension or purge them. And we can declare uh, which dimension we're gonna do that for. So here we have on line four, the uh, MDX set we're going to purge and basically that's going to delete all non-leaf level elements or delete the consolidations as we see the except level zero. On into the next one we'll check out the unwind dimension. So this can be helpful to break down uh, your consolidation. So if you have a, a hierarchy within a dimension and, and several rollups, we can use this code to unwind or delete those uh, parent-child relationships. As we see in the code, we have a double while going on. Unfortunately, we don't have a lot of indenting, so it's a little bit difficult to read, but we have a nested while within a while. Um, the outer while is uh, going through each element of the dimension, while the inner while checks to see if that element has any children. So how many uh, child size does it have? Does it have one child, two children, three children? And once that number gets to zero, this inner while will fall out and the process will be done. So a nice construct as well if you ever need to build a double while loop. You have a little starting code right there to work from. All right, let's jump down to the next category called iterators. Now I've noticed that the fine leaf members in hierarchy is identical to the iterate over members in a hierarchy. So we only have to cover that once. And we'll jump into that. And we see uh, that we can not only declare what dimension, but also what particular hierarchy uh, that this snippet is gonna work on. And it's gonna cycle through and identify all the leaf level members. So just typical uh, de declaration statements. When we get down into the while loop, we see uh, if the element level is zero or leaf level, then we can code in some action, whether that be write to an ASCII file or uh, possibly add elements to a certain subset. All right, next we'll jump to uh, iterate over dimension in a cube. This is a really handy snippet, which we'll review in the last code snippet of the build view. But this is the tab dim function, which has the ability to cycle through uh, all the dimensions of a cube, regardless of how big that cube is. So using the while loop, it's going to cycle one by one through each dimension until it reaches the final dimension. Doesn't matter if it's two dimensions or 20 dimensions, this code will work universally for that. 
All right, so I mentioned we have double coverage of the uh, third one here. It's the same identical as the first. And then the final one, iterate over members in a hierarchy backwards. Uh, this comes into play if you're deleting out elements from a hierarchy or deleting out uh, certain members, because then you'll need to do your while statement backwards. If you just use a typical while statement and you delete elements it within the code, then the index numbers are going to get out of whack because you have then deleted, say, index number three, and then it pulls up a new element as index number three to take its place. So it's important to go from the uh, setting the counter to the full size of that dimension, say 250 elements, and then working your way backwards as the counter subtracts by one until it gets to zero. All right, now we're into the other check if attribute exists. I didn't find this too particularly useful. I'm just basically looking up in a dimension to see if an attribute exists or not. I won't go too far into that one. And the last one was a bit confusing. I haven't seen it in practice either, where we would split a string uh, into separate chunks based on delimiters. So here we have the uh, example A, B, C. Uh, that's about five characters. Uh, and going through all this various uh, code declares what delimiter we're looking for, in this case, a comma. It's gonna start at index one and go through the five positions of your string to split. Um, and then it is going to do a special action within the while loop uh, when it hits that certain delimiter. So uh, using your while loop and your if statements to locate the delimiters that you come across, we can put in certain programming on lines 10 and 11 to decide what to do with those detected uh, items split out by the delimiter. And as promised, we'll go back to the very first one, which is create a view for export leaf level values. So this is very common in load views, whether it be uh, a source view or a zero out view. And this generates 28 lines of code, which was a lot more fun than having to write it by hand. So this is going to come in very handy and also be a nice teaching tool for folks somewhat novice to writing code. Uh, nice to see these standards uh, available to you in the code snippets section so you can practice that coding. I'm going to go ahead and select the income statement as my cube. And we'll use the temporary view. And just going through this code, we see that the income statement has been written as the uh, cube to find leaves. Uh, the temporary view uh, will be the view name used. And then in typical fashion, we uh, destroy the view if it exists already so that we can create a fresh copy on line 11. We set up the while loop iteration uh, as a number one. And then that tab dim function we mentioned earlier gives us the ability to cycle through any number of dimensions for uh, a given cube so that we can build subsets for every dimension. The while loop is going to function on which current dimension we're on. So as long as we haven't uh, hit the maximum number of dimensions, uh, it's going to pick out each dimension in the cube. Next, uh, we view the column dimension set and subset leaves. We say uh, if the subset exists, uh, we're going to destroy it so that we can create a fresh copy. We're going to create by MDX. The MDX statement is a filter by level to get us just the leaf level elements, level zero. And we're going to create those subsets, uh, one for each dimension by MDX. Once we've created the subset, we need a statement to assign that subset to uh, the given view that we have created. And then the iterator pushes us through all the dimensions of that cube. And then finally, the data source functions to properly assign the view we have created uh, and declare the server name and the cube view. So that wraps it up. Um, I was going to give an example of actually printing out that snippet. Make sure that your cursor is in a section where you're allowed to print. Uh, if you are up in the green statements, uh, it won't go through. But if I am appropriately down on that line, we'll pick out the income statement again. 
and we'll go ahead and insert the code and we see it stamps out all 28 of those lines into our prolog section. So I uh, hope that fully explains the code snippet feature just launched recently in PAW 81. In addition, they have a little bit of documentation on it in the README or the uh, what's new in, in PAW 81 section of the online help manual. So you can read through that section as well. And that wraps it up. Feel free to reach out if you have any questions. And of course, like and subscribe on YouTube where our channel is youtube.com forward slash PM square. That's all for now. Thanks. Thank you.